money hit the sky. He dropped it onto our houses. He dropped it into our yards. And they called Jane. He stole away our pain and headed out for the stars. He robbed from the rich and he gave the poor. Stood up to the man and he gave him what for our love for him now. It's hard to explain. The hero of Canton, the man they called Jane. Thank you, much. Greetings, all. I'm Mark Gunn. Let's see if I can get this microphone in so it's not popping so much. Is that better? That looks, that sounds better. Let's try it right up there. All right. All right. I am Mark Gunn, and uh, I'm going to sing some songs as people load in the room here. There's a song, uh, Okay, that's good. it's not for me. Okay, good, good. <laughs> All right, this is a song inspired by the episode um, Out of Gas, TV show Firefly. When life is throwing you curveballs and things are exploding all around you, sometimes you have to just take a step back and keep breathing. You want to keep breathing, don't you? Breathing in and out. Got to remember the reason, won't you? The reason you take her out. Early, she'll be with you the rest of your days. It all starts with breathing deeply, breathing in and out. It all began looking past what was to what our life would be. That's where I found so much freedom and a little serenity. An explosion knocked us to the ground, but we got back on our feet. Turn back the clock to remember why, what our life could be. You wanna keep breathing, don't you? I'm breathing in and out. Gotta remember the reason, won't you? The reason you take her out. Treat her properly, she'll be with you the rest of your days. It all starts with breathing deeply, breathing in and out. Some face life's challenges with a little bit of prayer. Others turn, face it head on, that's how they take in air. Sometimes it's sad to face what's true and try a different tack. We gotta keep on breathing, the rain will turn and back. You wanna keep breathing. Don't you? I'm breathing in and out. Gotta remember the reason. Won't you? The reason you take her out. Treat her properly. She'll be with you the rest of your days. All, it all starts with breathing deeply. Breathing in and out. Better believe that I'll fight on through space, though I might fail. I'll boost the signal through the night, even if I'm feeling frail. When at last you answer my call, we'll fix our damaged hearts. Together we'll keep on breathing, and we will never part. You want to keep breathing. Don't you? I'm breathing in and out. Gotta remember the reason. Won't you? The reason you take her out. 
treat her properly, she'll be with you the rest of your days. Oh, it all starts with breathing deeply, breathe in, in and out. It all starts with breathing deeply, breathe in, in and out. Thanks so much. And now for something completely different. Doctor went back in time, confident and clever. Doctor went where he planned, well, hardly ever. Doctor goes off again with his new gal today. Strictly platonic, it's Doctor of Gallifrey. Face all the dangers, Doctor of Gallifrey. Don't blink at angels, Doctor of Gallifrey. Dress like a crooked man and don some celery. Who's your designer, oh, Doctor of Gallifrey? Doctor wears jackets colored like two cans. Doctor wears bow ties. He says, they're cool, man. Flies a police box. Time lords get in the way. Play your recorder, oh, Doctor of Gallifrey. You see the master, Doctor of Gallifrey, run a bit faster, Doctor of Gallifrey. The honeymoon suite made Amy and Rory's day. Check out his unit, oh, Doctor of Gallifrey. The doctor has fought with Daleks and Autons. Doctor has saved all the worlds that he's fought on, except for the one that he screwed up royally. Tell me now, Doctor, what? to Gallifrey, travels through time and space, Doctor of Gallifrey, sometimes regenerates, Doctor of Gallifrey, doesn't that scarf get hot, or does it get in the way, have a jelly baby, Doctor of Gallifrey, take on the Cybermen, and be not afraid, and as with Microsoft, avoid the upgrade, they will delete or possibly something worse, just like the Borg in the other universe. Silence attack again, Doctor of Gallifrey. Daleks are back again, Doctor of Gallifrey. If there's no handicap ramp, they will exterminate. Wipe them from time itself, it's Doctor of Gallifrey. Rose is the bad wolf. Susan will keep her wits. Canines a robot. Perry, big eyes. Rivers reverse. Captain Jack goes every way. Here's two companions of Doctor of Gallifrey. Martha's a doctor too. Doctor of Gallifrey. Zoe's as smart as you. Doctor of Gallifrey. Jamie wears her trousers. I think that they are in the way. Please take me with you. Oh, Doctor of Gallifrey. Oh, is that time? All right, it is that time. <laughs> Me? Can you hear me now? Excellent. All right. Well, welcome everybody to the Jordan Con costume contest. Um, it's, yes, it's great to see such a large crowd here. Thank you all for coming. Um, so we're just gonna jump right into it. So first of all, I wanna tell you that there is an audience choice award. So be sure you cheer for your favorite costumes because that's how I'm judging how you're judging. So it gets complicated, but we'll figure it out. We're in it together. All right, so first up, we have Donovan Sandusky cosplaying as Have a Nice Day. <laughs> now introducing High Prince by Day, High Queen by Night. Aleph Carr's most eligible bachelor and bachelorette. Have a nice day, everyone.
Next up, Rosemary Williams playing Elsa of Arendelle. Ladies, gentlemen, snowfolk, and others of the court, please welcome Her Majesty Queen Elsa of Arendelle. After taking the throne and gaining full control of her magic, Queen Elsa led her nation into a new era of progress. Combining her ice powers with the technological power of steam, she has successfully developed new technology, raised her kingdom to a higher standard of living, and even taught snowmen to fly. <laughs> yes, indeed, she has truly forged a path into a new and much stronger future. Next is Dave Nicholson and Beth Roberts. Captain Helios and Lord Wanderer, a married couple who explore new places in her airship, the Circle City Racer, inspired by the Lady of Devices series by Shelley Adina. <laughs> Next up, we have Taffy and Twatcast. And this is the best hedge Rand and Matt slept under on the way to Camelin. Thank you. <laughs> Following that, we have Seth Lockhart and company. Can you say hashtag squad goals? <laughs> Straight from the pages of the Rhythm of War artwork come the likenesses of four of the 10 heralds. I'm sorry, I don't know the pronunciations on these. Nail, Palaya, Kalik, and Kanarak. Each contestant featured in this group heavily studied the artwork from the book and handmade every facet of their costume down to the tiniest detail. You can imagine the challenges these costumes faced when contemplating the designs of their individual cosplays. Now we have April Davis. In the Age of Legends, the ancient Aes Sedai created the Nim for agricultural purposes. Although the green man was the last of its kind, this is what a typical Nim in the Age of Legends would have looked like. <laughs> Following April, we have Kevin Davis. They say that a Murdral has less cunning than a woman and Trolloc fights with more honor, but the look of the eyeless is fear. Be afraid. <laughs> Liz Willoughby is playing a bright and fun tinker. This brightly hand-dyed linen skirt is made for a tinker party. Inspired by travels, the panels are slashed with a heart leaf. And what tinker wouldn't also have a wool shawl? See how cheerfully bright this hand-knitted shawl is. And did you notice the boots? <laughs> they were the inspiration for the entire... Notice the boots. <laughs> they were the inspiration for the entire outfit. This tinker is ready to have fun. Next, we have Michelle Strobeck, who is cosplaying Varen Aes Sedai of the Brown Aja. Anna Savage Duncan 
Moraine Sadai of the Blue Aja's clothing is influenced by many ages and lands and chosen carefully to inspire and bring the might of the, might of the White Tower's influence wherever her search for the Dragon Reborn takes her. After spending time in the waste with Matt, she has learned the value of a hat. <laughs> Jessica Jones is cosplaying Ellen Tracand. Ellen Tracand, queen of Andor and Kyrian, defender of the realm, protector of the people, high seat of House Tracand, pregnant with the twins of the Dragon Reborn. Fiercely protective of the babes growing in her belly and her peoples and lands. First sister to Avienda of the Nine Valley Set. <laughs> Strong in the one power and in will. First Aes Sedai to make Tarong Real in a thousands of years. <laughs> Next up, we have Tyler Goose Tree. No? What? Um, so from Brandon Sanderson's Reckoners series, Jonathan Phaedrus. <laughs> judges, judges have no idea what's going on. <laughs> okay. Jonathan Phaedrus, usually referred to as Prof, is the leader of the Reckoners, a group which hunts down and kills epics. Somewhat ironically, he himself is an epic of considerable power, known by the alias Limelight. Sorry, I didn't even know that. Phaedrus is categorized as a high epic due to both his force fields and his regeneration. He is possibly the only high epic with two different prime invincibilities, making him almost unkillable. Originally a fifth grade science teacher, he hides the fact that he's an epic from most of the Reckoners. He secretly gives his comrades his powers through his creations. The Tensors, the Disintegration, the Harm's Ways, uh, Regeneration, and Jackets, Force Fields. <laughs> Next we have a group of four, Brandon Anderson, no sorry, Brandy Anderson, uh, yeah. Um, Cita Romano, Theo Ro Ro Romero, sorry, Theo Romero and Marcos Romero. I can't read my own handwriting. Logan Ablar, the gentle false dragon of Gildan, has been captured near Lugard. He is escorted by Leandrin Sedai and her sisters of the Red Aja. The false dragon can no longer threaten to break the world. His army has fractured and the Red Sisters has saved you all from his tainted ways and corrupt madness. <laughs> Michelle Kellogg, an IEL wise one, taking a break from her duties of training apprentices. She has crafted laces through her bulky skirts so as to tie them up to make running easier and keep her hands free. The only skilled dreamwalker of her clan, she provides other clan wise ones with information gathered from other clan wise ones in Teleron Riyadh. We have Reese up next. Jeff, the accountant, is ready to practice his massive aggression at the fancy party, but can he keep the Kraken at bay? Lauren Kamayak 
is a Grey Warden mage who fought in the Fifth Flight. She continues to protect all from the darkspawn threat still amongst us. Atreyu Calloway. You have seen some spooky skeletons, but have you seen a goofy pun-loving skeleton before? Meet Sans from Undertale. Chris Orndorf, Dorf, Orndorf. Originally part of a Disney steampunk joint venture for 2020, <laughs> Ursula <laughs> Ursula is looking for some poor, unfortunate souls to make a deal in exchange for a ribbon. Oh, oh, thank you. I've just been informed the sea witch stole my voice. We might be in trouble. Emily Reed. Here we have Leandrin in her Leandrin of the Red Aja spreading good works around the continent. Next up is Jessie Blair, a maiden of a spear. She is a novice maiden who is still learning her spears. Do we not have? We do not have Jessie. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so next up is our final contestants of the judged portion of the costume contest. What? Oh, you're very last. <laughs> Next up, we have the exhibition costume. <laughs> All right. You're not Ross. Okay. Y'all, we don't know what we're doing up here. We're, we're making it up as we go along. All right. Therese Barrowy. <laughs> Aludra. Nindenhold is the disgraced, I'm sorry, former mistress of the Guild of Illuminators Chapter House in Kyrian. You may recognize her. You may recognize her uh, from the events preceding the Civil War in Kyrian, though she maintains the Illuminators have nothing to do with those events and were themselves victims of an attack by dark friends. More recently, you can enjoy Aludra's displays at Balan Luca's grand traveling show and magnificent display of marvelous wonders. Yay! Can't find it? Just look for the night flowers. Aludra carries with her the tools of her trade, but don't worry, she assures us that all of her powers are safe powders are safely stored to avoid any accidents. She continues exploring more uses of the Illuminator's secrets and is working on an invention for which she is quite excited. Unrelated, if there is a bell founder in the house, a looter will like a word with you. <laughs> Next, we have Zinni Romero, Alistair Anderson, and Reese Ro Romero. Reese Romero, there we go. Introducing the Teenage Trio. Here we have Randy Althor, Maddie Coffin, and Perry Ibarra. These three middle school age ruffians are up to no good. Randy is improving with his bow, but he's carrying, no, but he's constantly distracted by pining after Egwene. Maddie is planning mischief as always, carrying a stolen pie from Nisa Yellen and a badger ready to loose on the village green. <laughs> Perry is going through his emo phase. 
But he already has a love for wolves and blacksmithing. These hormonal, angsty teenagers have no idea what's in store for them. Uh, Kaylee Hahn is playing today as Lanfear, the only one true love of Luz Theron, the most powerful of the chosen and the true great lord of the dark. <laughs> Kayla Coffin is Tigrain Mentir, warrioress and mother of the Dragon Reborn. Next up, we have Amanda Perez and Giselle Perez, a wise woman and a guy, Shane. She's here to carry my work. <laughs> That's all we got. <laughs> Next, we have Kitsun Kitsunagari, who was playing Uno Nomesta with the Horn of Valir. <laughs> and be sure you check out their mask because it's a flaming goat kisser mask. It's fabulous. <laughs> Ruth Comejo. As the pattern crumbled around the Amarillo seat, Egwene wove a column of pure white, the opposite of Balefire, a fire of her own, a weave of light and rebuilding, the flame of Tarvalon. Next up, we have Jennifer Perriman and Dane Perriman. Jennifer Sadai of the Yellow Aja and her warder Dane. <laughs> Next, we have Mike Krobach, everyone's favorite oily slick of madness inducing. <laughs> Last second counterstroke Sidene coding. I present to you the Dark One's Taint. <laughs> Up next, we have Nui Sianes and Mezzi Sianes. Born, born into the fandom, Nui and Mezzi have never known life without the Wheel of Time. Today, they are portraying their favorite characters, Matt and Rand, with costumes they have compiled themselves. <laughs> Mistress Dovey. Acting in her official capacity of Mistress of Penances, <laughs> Mistress Dovey is channeling her inner red today. She has dressed up some generic pieces with some fabulous handcrafted pieces from the exhibit hall. Be sure to send all misbehaving novices and soldiers to her for penance as needed. Next, we have Lady Mox, cosplaying as Lady Moraine. <laughs> Penultimately, we have John Savage, cosplaying James Oliver Rigney Jr.
and author of Conan novels, historical fiction, and other stories. And if those other stories don't work out, I'm going to all use all these characters for one hell of a novel with a horse named Bella. <laughs> Now, finally, next up is our final contestants of the costume contest. They have a small request. They inform me they require a small amount of time to set up and create their scene. And I requested that everyone who would like to, who would like to be surprised, to please close their eyes while they set up a few things. They promised me that the surprise is worth it. But if you're not comfortable with closing your eyes while they set up, it is also fine. <laughs> they're working very hard. Keep your eyes closed if they're closed. It's worth it. They're getting there. Sorry, I should have had some patter for this. Toast. Yes, let's talk about toast. Toast. My favorite topping on toast is jam. My mom makes homemade jelly. And it's been fantastic to eat through her jelly made from wild roses and primroses and peonies and very flowery jam. All right, you may open your eyes. up here judging your judging of the uh, contest so we can do is that now I don't have any cue cards all right we're gonna do the audience choice I'm just picking the top five here based on my recollection and my star system, my very complicated star system up here. All right. First, we have Paul. Please stay on stage. We have Chris Ornder as Ursula. Uh, Kitsunagari as Uno Nomesta. Mike Krobach as The Taint. And Marcos Romero and company as Logan and the Reds. Okay, so, oh, thank you. So, I'm going to go down the line and you're going to cheer for your favorite group or person. So, first, 
Paul as Randall Thor. Our lovely Ursula. Uno. Logan and the Reds. Finally, the Taint. Wait, I have to consult. Hold on. That's the hardest job right there. That's the worst. All right. Drum roll, please. The winner of the People's Choice Award for the costume contest is the Taint. to all of our contestants. And congratulations. All right, next up we're gonna hear, we're gonna hear a few songs from Mark Gunn and then we will get to the uh, costume contest winners. All right. So is this the time when I do that, that special song for you, Red? Is this, is this the time or no? Yes. Oh, sorry. So, okay. I forgot. All right. So uh, I asked Mark if he knew any songs about toast. Turns out I do. Oh, excellent. Funny thing is that it's actually a Wheel of Time song. I know. Go fig. It goes like this. Red is, sorry, sorry, give me blood. Sorry, Red, oh, not you. Rand is dancing around bell time. Matt and Perrin are making a roast. Wayne is learning the ways of the wisdom while Lorraine is making trolley toast. Sorry, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> How do I pull this off? I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> no, I do actually, I did realize that I actually do have another, I mean, I'm, I'm, I haven't quite learned, written my uh, Wheel of Time, quintessential Wheel of Time song yet, um, but I did realize that I sort of actually had one already in the works. It's just a little bit different. The song is called Close Your Eyes, and the original song was written by Daniel Glasser, um, but it's uh, in the great uh, convention mode uh, we like to rewrite songs and filk them. And so, um, song is close. You can call it Close Your Eyes if you want. So, but you can close your eyes right now, just relax. It's a very lovely song to fall to sleep to. In fact, I, the original, I like to sing to my children. So, close your eyes and sleep. There are trollics in your dreams go to sleep my darling there's a trollic underneath your bed the trollics in your bed are gonna eat your face stay in your bed there are traps on the floor <laughs> the trollics in your bed are gonna eat your face. Right, we'll get this, we'll get this. Sugar and spice and everything nice. Why do you think we say that? It's so the trollics underneath your bed will want to eat your face. 
used to have a sister. She wouldn't go to sleep. So the trollic underneath her bed ate her face. Do not call for your mother. Who is it that you think who let the trollics in to eat your face? Snakes and snails and puppy dog tails. Who can account for the taste of trollics? The trollics in your bed are gonna eat your face. Baby, don't you cry. Or the we won't wait till you fall asleep. For the trucks eat your face. My father sang the song to me. But he slipped and he fell in a deadly trap. And the trollocs underneath my bed ate his face. That is not a blanket. Good night. The, uh, that, that's on a, uh, one of my CDs. And thank you. So some of you might remember this. When I, when I, well, usually when I say I have CDs, you say, you have CDs? The leap at the end really makes it. So, um, you know, if someone sitting next to you, feel free to jump into their lap. <laughs> Um, uh, so, but yeah, so when I say that I have CDs, you say, you have CDs? So let's try that again. I have CDs. Yes. Yeah. Right back there is Chris. Say hi, Chris. <laughs> He's going to help you if you want to check out not just the CDs. Yeah, we'll work on this, okay. Um, and the show tomorrow is 11.30. We have to practice, so we're going to warm up for this. Uh, but I also have album pens, which are um, lapel pens that have uh, album codes on them so that, you know, basically you can wear your albums on your sleeve, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know, pretty cool, huh? <laughs> oh my God, that's the first. <laughs> there will be many more, there will be many more. All right, so um, years ago I put out a, uh, a CD called Irish Drinking Songs for Cat Lovers. It's a pet project of mine. Thank you so much. I live for the moans. <laughs> that joke's never going away as long as people are moaning, I'm telling you. Um, and that was followed up by an, an album called Whiskers in the Jar. Yeah, I like, I like the puns. Uh, and uh, every now and then I put out a new song, and this is one of the newest ones. I was wondering, you know, what it is about cats that, uh, why people, cats do the things they do. In particular, you know, you take a set cup of water and you set it up here, what's going to happen to it? It's going to fall down, not by itself. So I was like, why do they do that? Are they just jerks? Well, maybe, but I think I came up with an answer. See the glass cats, watch its glass cats, see the liquid. Up of the table, see your human in their socks, cats, as they step in the puddle you made. Little girl holds a full sippy cup, doesn't drink all of the juice up. She leaves for school, then the bottle ends with a crash. Your paws get sticky on the floor. You want to sing along? Just like to see the glass cats. Watch it splash, cats. See the liquid roll up of the table. See your human in their socks, cats. As they step in the 
puddle you made. Humans watching TV distracted, or they leave to use the bathroom, jump up on the coffee table, and knock the milk down, and lick it up. Watch it flash, cats, see the liquid roll up of the table. See a human in their socks, cats, as they step in the puddle you made. Ice cold glass of water at bedtime, set it down, not Far from your pillow, the sun has lifted at two in the morning. So knock it down, then you're satiated. See the glass cats, watch it flash, cats. See the lamp wet off of the table. See your human. In their socks, cats, as they step in the puddle you made. What care we if they're done drinking? What we care about is physics and motion. Tap the glass, cats, watch it jiggle. If it doesn't tip over, then knock it again. See the glass cats. Watch it flash cats. See the liquid roll up of the table. See a human in their socks cats. As they step in the huddle you made. Let me hear you. See the glass cats. Watch it splash, cats. See the liquid fill up of the table. See your human in their socks, cats. As they step in the puddle you made. Thanks so much. <clears throat> All right, so, um, I have a, my newest CD. Good job, way to go. It's called Selkuth, which means when everything is strange and different, yet you find it marvelous anyway, which I think is very fitting for a science fiction convention. Thank you, wonderful <laughs> people dressed up, costumers, because it's absolutely amazing all the costumes and all the love that we all have for something that's so different and yet marvelous. Um, so uh, a lot of times, like yes, yesterday, I was wearing my kilt. And I actually wrote this song for, well, about my love of the kilt, but it's not just that. It's about the love of just accepting things that are different and uh, strange and different. And um, it's a song called Kilty Pleasure. Let me tell you who I am, red-blooded American. I work 12-hour days, sweating hard for crap pay. The days are far too long. When at last the weekend comes, the pants go in the bin, and the kilt comes on again. Some days I wake up with a joyful expression as I wrap my kilt round my waist. I latch on my scorn and pull up my stockings. A smile grows on my face. And it's off the bubble for the fair of the best. A wee swing goes into each step. Cause I'm American born and Celtic forever. And both are truly blessed. I may never know what it means to be normal. Nor have I knowingly cared. I will dance the streets. Though it makes you uncomfortable. My kilt will fly in the air. Cause it's my guilty pleasure. Cause it's my guilty pleasure. 
some damn strange or call me a girl they like to make fun of me but i blow up their jokes because i am proud of my scottish ancestry but i am also proud of the blood in my veins as different as our country my kilt is a symbol of the land that i love and all of its diversity i may never know what it means to be normal nor have i knowingly cared i will dance the streets oh it makes you uncomfortable my kilt will fly in the air because it's my guilty pleasure it's my guilty pleasure You can say what you like, but the times they are changing. We celebrate our differences. Be black, brown, or white, I will fight for your rights, because I know what it means to be scared. See, my family were killed when we fought in Culloden. We helped for all one time oppressed. So I'll tear down your walls, my southern draw, while donning my highland dress. I may never know what it means to be normal, nor have I knowingly cared. I will dance the streets, though it makes you uncomfortable. My guilt will fly in the air, because it's my guilty pleasure. I may never know what it means to be normal, nor have I knowingly cared. I will dance the streets, though it makes you uncomfortable. My guilt will fly in the air, because it's my guilty pleasure. It's my guilty pleasure. It's my guilty pleasure. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed the music you heard, I will have a table in the other room. So come check me or talk, talk to Chris later. We have an, yeah, yeah, there are CDs. Yeah, lots of CDs. <laughs> are we all good? Are you, uh, okay, cool. All right. Thank you, Mark. That cat song in particular was quite touching and familiar. So first up, we're gonna do Judge's Choice and they are going to announce their choices. I take it we introduce ourselves? I yeah. think we should. Okay. We're just some random people that look great. Yeah. yeah, we are. We're just random people who look great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Leslie or Lanis, depending on where you've seen me. Um, and but Catherine from Redfield Design. I'm Redfield. <laughs> yep. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and Dina Whitney. Uh, how did I get stuck with the microphone? I hate this. I know. You just have to stop. Stood up there. So, loud, so like, this is fine for me. Judge's Choice Award. So I would like to award my. Oh, you want to go over like critique? Are we going to go over critique? critique. I'm just going to say it. Okay. Did I just let, want? Let, you let, can let, go let, right ahead. Do one thing. All right, hi guys. <laughs> I know you don't want me to have this mic, but I do. So deal with it. Um. So. <laughs> Um, I would like to thank everybody who participated, whether they're a walk-in, whether they decided to come and judge with us. I want to see all of the walk-ins be judges, like we can judge you next year, because you guys were fabulous, okay? It was very hard to decide who should get what and where, and we, um, I mean, we had, we fist to cough. I mean, all the time. Um, and if any of you would like any feedback from us, well, not you guys, but them guys, um, feedback from us afterwards, I at least, and I'm sure my two compatriots would love to give you feedback. Um, yeah, and it was really hard and they did a great job. So can I just have one more round of applause for everybody who participated? Okay. We'll just, we can just go around. Like you do yours and I'll do mine and you'll do yours. Okay. Okay, so my award for Judge's Choice Award is going to be to Jessica Jones for Pregnant Elaine. You missed it. She had a cup of goat's milk that she just was, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Yeah, 
when Paul were using your backdrop. That's what it's here for now. <laughs> um, so my judge's choice goes to um, Ruth, who was Elaine, uh, nope, Egwene, sorry. Um, and she was just a walk-in, but I thought that she was really great and she deserved yep. something. The pillar of life. Navigating hoop skirts is never easy, especially when it's warm. Oh, did she leave? No. No, you're all wrong here with them. Okay. Okay, good. All right. And then uh, my judge's choice goes to somebody who. I've not seen the show. I've only been seeing the memes, but she embod they embodied the character. And when all the judges are going, you painted that? What? Reese, get up here. <laughs> the beard, the everything. Embodiment of performance. Embodiment of performance. And we have one more, and this is kind of the the principle of cosplay is it's not just about, you know, how good of a sewer you are, how good of a craftsman you are. It's how you think about the items and materials you have. It's how you put together. It's how you assemble everything. And the embodiment of outside thinking and clever use of bought items, the hedge, twat cast. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm back. I know that. Oh, here, hold on. <laughs> Darn it. Also, this isn't the list. No, it's not. Um, Can I have the list? <laughs> yeah, we have the got backup list. I need. I need who actually what? Oh, do you want to read <laughs> <laughs> Oh, were you going to do this? No. She's oh, no. Go oh, let's yeah. go. No, please. Let's get no, no, yeah. no, no one answered. Answer. <laughs> Am I doing this now? Somebody make a decision. You. It's, I okay. get the extra round award. I'm back. I know you miss me. <laughs> give me the phone. Oh. <laughs> or give me the list. I don't. Someone I give me a thing with the words <laughs> that I should say. We do this once a year, guys. Every year. I don't know. Okay. All right, beautiful people. This is the moment that you've been waiting for all weekend. I know it is. So um, the first place for the novice, what they did was amazing and the complexity of, of the technique, I don't want to give it away because what I say is going to give it away. Um, we give the novice award to Liz, who is the bright fun tinker. I cannot tell you how hard dying is because I don't do it and I'm a master at this.
Guys, this one was a close one because you almost made us redecision everything on this. So good job on you. Our journeyman is going to be Chris as Steampunk Ursula. Our master, you all kind of guessed it, is going to be Seth and his group of, I don't remember what they are. Heralds. Heralds, thank you. Thank you. While they're doing that, can I please get a drum roll? Thank you. Thank you. It's a very nice drum roll. It also sounds like pattering rain, so I'm here for it. The best in show. The winner of all the winners. Uh, wait a minute. We're, we're workmanship first. Workmanship first. <laughs> I still like the rain, though, so keep with that. <laughs> Is going to go to April, who was the NIM. Sorry, guys, I get just really excited and I just want to skip to everything. Now for the sound of pattern rain. Thank you, thank you. Best in show goes to Marcus and Company for Logan and Leandrin. A wonderful case of where novice cosplayers embody. Okay, yeah, go for it. A wonderful case of novice of the co novice cosplayers embodying the role, for doing a performance, using a great use of things that they both create and find, and just rocking what they did. So, yay! So we are going to do a group photo real quick and maybe a selfie. Um, and I don't know if you want to hang around for that, but you can. Wait, you want? Hold on. Hold on. We have a service announcement. And once we get our group photo, if any of the contestants would like to hang around out front for a little bit so people get pictures.